<laughs> now I don't know if you know, but I'm first dangerous with a microphone. Have you seen this? No. Have you heard about this? What did you do with the microphone? Oh, I, is this your, your <laughs> karaoke mic? My, my portable Bluetooth microphone. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's absolutely mangled from being brought on adventures and being fecked around the place. I, there's, you know what, there's no harm in a small bit of plague artery, but I'm just going to try. These knobs are absolutely blown up. Jesus Christ. There's all sorts of filthy reference. There we go. Is it because you've never had someone this loud on the microphone, is it? Do you know what? It's, you need me to move away from the microphone. I can do that if you want. It's the, it's the Midlands leash dulcet tones that cool. the mic I had it set actually I think I set it to cork accidentally oh Jesus and it wasn't we don't have that kind of melody here now we're pure flat flat no a bit of melody to be fair to you 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 have enough of the outside world in you that you pronounce the T in flat or is that because I'm here but that's just because you're oh here. fair enough fair enough yeah, no, no don't no. feel I'm only from down the road don't you, feel usually the, the THs it's a very regular special occasion Irregular, should I say, <laughs> special occasion that that would come out. The visitors come to the house and the THs come out, just like the good, the good China. I love that. It is, it was, I'll never forget, I was in the, because it excites, like, I love accents and the reason why accents are the way they are. Like, you know, when you go, is it hiding stuff from the British? Were we hiding the teas from the British or something back yeah. in the day? <laughs> like, Peter ate his tehos at the computer, drinking water. Yeah, water, yeah. Articulated lorries is just one of my most <laughs> favourite. <laughs> 33 and a third. It's, I never forget, I was in Eden Derry one time in a petrol station. Eden Derry's a rare spot. It's a, uh, did you know it's the occult capital of Ireland? It's a what? The occult. What? Satanic. No. Yeah. What? Yeah, swear to God. It's not too far from here. I know. Just across the Carberry Bog. I may, I may pay them a visit. <laughs> <laughs> My mother calls me the Antichrist all the time. The, apart, and this woman was in the queue and she was reading this wedding magazine. And she was on the phone to somebody being told what page to go to. She goes, oh, Jesus, so lovely. That's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. She got to this page where she went, oh, 74, is it? Just, that's very sophisticated. No. <laughs> sophisticated. I thought that is the most ironic way of saying sophisticated in the Ad- world. Adding in extra syllables. Or no need. No need for No it, need. Man. The world was full of syllables. It didn't oh. need any more. Like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I actually recently was down at a gig in Limerick and... My younger brother goes to college there and his friends, we were getting a taxi home and his friends turned around to me and said, James, you haven't lost the leash accent anyway. Like I've lived in Dublin, I've lived, I lived in Greece for a while, like I've been around, but it just, it won't leave me. It's like a bad smell, you know. It's ignorance too, and I like that. I like that. It's a country rural ignorance. And I was, who I am. It's, I was so happy when I first came across your page, I went, oh Jesus, she's actually speaking how we speak. Because it's very easy to kind of go off the, so guys, hi, it's me here to... Uh, oh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be trying on some bits. <sighs> um, yeah, no, I just... <laughs> I want to eat my own nostrils. I can't. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's ingrained in me to talk the way I talk, I guess. I just can't lose it. Um, it probably slows down and neutralizes a little bit more when I'm like in Dublin and around other people. But then sometimes I just kind of go back into my default of my normal accent and then there's an echo in the room of people basically reiterating what I've said in the way I've said it like I was recently on a weekend in Westport and one of the girls that was there was from Monaghan um, don't tell me she took the piss and out of she accent. still takes the piss out of me about my accent and I'm like come here uh, pots and kettles there girl don't, don't, don't start me once I start I won't stop start fighting yeah. start fighting I'll, I'll fight any man <laughs> take the shirt off any man <laughs> But that's, that got me, because that's what piqued my interest. It's like, oh, she hasn't, because so, like, I know, I have friends with girls who, and fellas do it too, but the girls have such a wide scope of things to be talking about, because mm-hmm. fellas won't listen to other fellas actually trying to talk about anything. They'll yeah. go, where's the drinking? And, you know, so, but girls will, so there is that platform for girls to go, so this is what I've been sent today. Let's see if it look it's a pile of shite or it actually works. Mm. But, you know, like, I know girls who put on that accent, and you're like, what are you doing? They kind of all have that generic. Hello, um, hi guys. Video. It's like you're showing your mother answers the phone and she sounds nothing like <laughs> what she does in real life. Hello, you've reached the Cody residence and you're like, you don't sound like that. Why are you doing that? Like, it's, there is very much a, a culture for that kind of an accent, but I don't know. I just, I can't. I've often been on nights out where I've had lads come up to me and be like, you don't look like you'd sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> we will be clipping that. That is going to be the that's the that's the trailer. And I'm like, you oh. don't look like you sound. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't look like I would sound. 
what do you think it would sound like? And then they just presume it would be like a South Dublin accent. I'm like, well, I am shocked and offended by that statement. But we move. <laughs> we move. It's a good icebreaker, I guess. That's, oh, that's tremendous. This, it's, yeah, because my wife had a very strong South Dublin accent when I met her first. Oh, Lord. But she, and she'd spent time in England, so there was even a, a softness that way. But she went to a very nice school. The sort of school that would give you this accent regardless oh, in Dublin. Jesus. And they sang hymns and stuff, you know, that kind of way. Nice, oh. nice school. But then she met me and then it all went off. And she said something the other day that I now realise she can never move back to Dublin. So tip. She was at the boot of the car and I was asking her, had she seen my wallet? Because of course, why could I look for the whole thing myself? Mm. Yeah. I had to see my wallet and she popped up and she would have always said something polite like, excuse me, what's that? But sorry. Did she go, ha? I swear on my life. <laughs> no, that's I my swear I'm always in a car. Like, she popped up from behind the back, ha? Like, she even looked a bit li- like me and everything. But she said it, I'm like, oh, that's so... Oh, you went full tip on me there. Oh, full and I tip. I loved every minute. Yeah, get up that stairs. <laughs> get up them stairs. We don't have the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get up something. <laughs> <laughs> it was... But it was in that moment I went, oh, I, you're ruined. She can yeah. never go back. Like, But she like she loves... Like, even our young fella now, when like, he was would have been born at South Dublin. However, had all the, the trappings of... Could have been... But the next time we moved down while he was still small. So now his first kind of words were like, well, like. So, <laughs> well, lad. I was so happy. I was so happy. I was like, well, fair good. Who's that fella? I was like, just <laughs> great. Any other way. Like, uh, had we stayed even a little length of time, it would have been, here's a game. Do you know what I mean? It would have been absolutely uh, amazing. Oh, but, a few Heinemites with the guys. A few Heinemites. Vitamin H guys. Got to get a day. Revo. Revo. <laughs> Ah, I should be taking the piss out of him, God bless. I mean, I, I really can't talk when it comes to accents, Mac. I don't take the piss out of anyone's accent because I'd be the first one to take the piss out of my own. Oh, listen, I, I still meet people, like I did a show years ago called Dame on Ivor, where I played a posh character in it. I played a guy called Tarquin. And I know Dame on Ivor, I didn't yeah. realize you were on it. So I didn't have this get-up going on. I loved you know? the, the one where it's like, how do you um, check? Oh, you use the dipstick. Dipstick, come and check the oh, world. There's a dipstick. He calls the car driver yeah. dipstick. <laughs> he was a lovely fella, that, that guy that played dipstick. He was, uh, he had no idea what he was doing on set with us, the poor bastard, because things got wild. Yeah. It was a wild time to make a TV show like that, because yeah. everybody they needed were actually from the area, bar me. Yeah. Like, so they go, so we're going to need like, you know, maybe 30 or 40 girls from St. Dublin who are just wild. And they'd literally, there was like a hotline to ring them and they would show up. And then I'd be stuck in the middle going, sorry, I'll just kick off my willies there one second. What accent did you want again? And again, collar goes up. But I still meet people who get annoyed at me because of that. I, like genuinely, a taxi driver one time went, it's not right. I went, what do you mean it's not right? No, I mean, I, I looked you in the shower and all, but you know what I mean? This, I don't, I said, what? I said, it's called acting. But were they mad at the time or are they just mad now? Oh, they're mad now because yeah. they found out that I wasn't actually from Dublin. And that was from 200 miles away. Yeah, but it's kind of that, we're in that era now where everyone's mad about everything. Oh, like, sure, I you love. can't, like, you can't do anything. Like. I love, I, I, I know, I know. And you, I, this is a question I must ask you because, like, I, do, I get very little heat when it comes to people giving me guff. Because they're like, he's a stand-up. He tells dick jokes. Mm. What's the, what can I say to him? Well, I've had people like when I'm on on podcasts and I'm going up the north and I remember somebody going, I can't believe you wore that trousers and short combo on a podcast. I'm like, what? How is that even in your thought process? I know. I do still be in the mindset of going to podcasts. I'm like, I do forget the times they're recorded. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> take me as I am, so. <laughs> Dude, but that's the, the thing is like this the video, this will only be going on Patreon. There's a handful of lads abroad that watch it. That's it. The, well, lad, subscribe to the Patreon, you will, yeah? Fair play. Well, lad. Uh, that'll actually be another co- clip. <laughs> <laughs> well, lad. Go on, lad, good lad. But give us your money, I don't. But, but like, you must be, Jesus, I mean, because I know you don't put yourself out there in that sense. Like, you put yourself out there. You create characters every time, like, because you're a comedy-based person. Like, Well, the, the character is me. So yeah. So, any of the backlash I get is actually me that gets the negative backlash. Is there, it's is, actually not a persona. Who's that giving me a negative backlash? Well, there, there are times, but I think a lot of people that follow me now, I it's not that it's it's weaned out. I don't. I wouldn't say it's weaned out because it's growing. But I think that they're getting involved at a time that they're starting to see that that is me. 
they get they, it. They get it that yeah. it's me. So if like before, I think people thought I was putting it on. And then the more the more content I show of me at home and me and my family and me just talking and just being myself yeah. in terms of even when I get deliveries, they're starting to realize that oh she's she's not putting this on this yeah. she is. So there's less room for them to be like, Oh, you're you're a joke or this and that. I'm like, Yeah, I know I'm a joke. That's the point. Like that's the point of what I do. But I get so many comments now of people saying that they have like shit days and that I make them laugh. And I'm like, that's all I care about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like and be careful telling me that you think I'm funny, though, because I get ahead of myself. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the Irish in you, because yeah. I love the like your your handle is classy Cody. Yeah. And there's no way that he, you were given that to yourself, or somebody gave that to you in actual on the nose classiness, because okay. Irish people don't do that. So the where classy Cody came from was my the very first time I got an iPhone, I. Had my had a stupid email address, something like Loopy Lou on two, something. Like <laughs> Didn't have a Gmail address. Hotmail at hotmail dot com. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sexy babes, wait, wait, and answer your call. Um, but I was there with, with two of the lads, and I was like, Jesus, I can't for the life of me think of an email address. Like, I was, really, what I should have done was Louise Cody at Gmail dot com. Yeah. I had any brain in two years. But one of the lads just goes Cassie Cody, and I was like, "Why would I call it Cassie? Like, because you're fierce Cassie. Like how we, how I carry myself, how I would dress, and just my my morals when it comes to just normal life things." And then, sure, I, I stuck with the name, and I had it like on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all across the board, because it was just my email address. You know, yeah. It's like when you put in your email address, it, it automatically picks your username. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's what I am. And then when I started the social media stuff. I kind of started to feel like, oh, Jesus, this is more of a running joke now at this stage because I curse like a sailor. Yeah. I don't I don't go on like I'm classy, but I, I I went through a point where I thought, mm, I might change this. And then I was like, no, it's actually funnier to keep it now at this stage because people, it's nearly like a running joke. Like, oh, you're classy, you are. I am, yeah. It was upsetting for everyone involved. It was. It was very stressful. <laughs> Any, anybody wondering, that we, they, like, for some reason, two absolute... Well, I love the way you didn't jump in because you're definitely not a techie person either, are you? I don't know. I'd be fairly decent at oh, tech, but I could see how small the writing was on the screen. That's why I said <laughs> straight off the bat, I'm like, I am blind. I can't see what that is. So I wasn't even going to try to attempt. Also, didn't want to put you under pressure. But you know, it's a stressful thing when your equipment doesn't work. That's fair sound because a lot of people would be over your shoulder going, and did you but ask I, And did you do this? And did you do that? Do it? I'm like, what are you, a fucking manual? No. People do it. Like, in fairness to... You can't, you can't, I used to absolutely lose the rag with people, but the more and more, like that, the people that would have been going on early doors in your career, like asking you, just make it stupid, you can't get angry at people really anymore, can no. you? Like, there's no point, like, because... It's wasted energy. To be honest, to take, well, I wouldn't be an angry person anyway, it'd take an awful lot for me to get angry, unless it's a hunger issue, that's a different... Oh yeah, oh yeah, well that's... I think that's a given when you're a woman, I think if you're hungry, someone could die. So I have like a, a grace period where it's like I, I let people around me know when I'm hungry. But literally, that's, not, that's how bad it gets. Like there's a full, you've heard of alter egos. I, I go full switch. Like. Yeah. So I'd be like, okay, so especially if I'm nowhere near food, I'd be like, okay, this is a warning shot. We've got like 10 minutes before. I'm like, I'm, I'm at a seven. We've got 10 minutes. And then it's like, I'm at, I'm at nine. I'm at 11, I'm at 11, we need to, and then once it, but so sometimes if I, when I get to 11, I just like, I go full, so obviously gone way past 10, um, I go silent. Really? Yeah, like it's completely silent and I'm never quiet, yeah. as you can imagine. Um, it's painful for everyone around me, more, more so than anything else, but when I go quiet then everyone's like, she needs a snack, just get her a snack quick, don't, don't even look at her, don't make eye contact, just, just slowly pass the protein bar to her <laughs> throw and a back bars away so as well. No <laughs> sudden movements. Um, yeah, but no, it would take an awful lot for me to get angry anyway. I, to be fair, fair play to you for actually copping that it's hunger because the amount of times that I, the length of time I've been on this planet, I still get surprised at my own rattiness as a result of hunger. Mm. And I'm very ratty when I get hungry. Yeah. Like I'm normally right easy going, but when it comes to hunger, I'm the very same way, but I get surprised by myself going, and it will take an intelligent person around me to go, maybe you should eat something. Yeah. Well, when was the last time you eat? 
Yeah, or asking that question, but yeah. oh no, I ate, I ate on the way, pretty close to the way here, so okay. this is all going to be very sombre. Grand, no very yeah, I ate before I came as well, so be you're, safe, you're safe hands. <laughs> <laughs> we will well, not let the demon out today! It's good, but getting back to the classy one, I do like that, because that's Ireland in a nutshell, isn't it? Like, if you, like, you've straight hair, but easily, as an, Ir- an Irish nickname, you'd be called Curly. Yeah. Because, heaven forbid, I actually, I'm amazed that somebody actually kind of paid you a compliment by saying, I don't know, you're classy enough, like. Yeah, I think that's kind of like an Irish thing is we, our love language is abuse. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I'd be like, I'd be the kind of person that I, if I think someone deserves a compliment, I'd come straight and say it. Like, Would you? Oh yeah, I'm very complimentary. Like, And a lot of people, it's funny because you see people, I, I even as recent as this week, like anyone I've complimented, they just get so uncomfortable. Yeah. They don't know what to do with it. They're yeah. like, oh, well, stay the head yeah. And I'm like, right, okay, well, that's you. That's fine. You can't take compliments. But that's just me, like. Yeah, I've noticed that, and I think it probably comes with confidence in that the lack of shite you give. Because I notice people, it's an embarrassment thing to give a compliment. Yeah. It's like, I'm embarrassed. Like, I see it now, especially since I moved back down, down home. There's People aren't as knotted in self-loathing as they were when I left. Yeah. Do you know the kind of way people are like, ah, hey. But, like, there's still people who would go, oh, oh. Your whole comedy going, and it's key, like you're going, man, just, just, just let, let yeah. it go, let it go, just relax. Who relax. hurt you? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think there's part of it though for me is like, do you know the way like Irish culture is just like they hate to see people doing well, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of ingrained in me that like, especially if I'm like scrolling through my Instagram and I see a girl who I mightn't be friends with, who I know, and she looks well or whatever, I will go, out, I will tell her she looks well, like. Do you know, that would just be in my head because I think it's just a standard thing that people just go out, oh, she looks well. I'm never going to tell her that. Like, would, you know, are, I, there, are women nice with men, though, in that factor, do you think? Like, because no bloke is ever, unless in comedy I do, like, because I'm growing the hair for charity and it's all coming off next week. Hmm. And people were get, like, lads were going, ah, Jay, it's not. I like it. I'm like, ah, it's because it's, it's comedian's hair, hmm. but it's ridiculous. Like, hmm. But the moustache, lads are going, don't you ever get rid of that moustache on through it because I can't grow one yeah and that's the only compliment I will ever get off a man yeah ever um no I'm saying I, that I, I don't I, get I don't get plenty of women either yeah. <laughs> cash 22 um no I, I think I don't think men are very good at giving compliments I think I think if I think of a man like just even like I don't know if that's a that's a tough one it's like they don't want to give me too big of a head either like Right, yeah. So yeah. they'd be like, oh no, like, keep her grounded. I'm not going to tell her that. Like. Is that the idea behind it? Like, yeah, well, I don't know, I'm not a man, I don't think anyway. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I, that's what I would take from it. Like. I think you're probably right. But it's, I, it's probably a confidence thing is that if they get kind of more of the upper hand than me in this conversation, then I'm not in at all because I've got nothing to back yeah. it up. Like, you know. Whereas uh, I'm, like, I'm like an open book. Like. Well, in fairness to you, like you, you asked the logical question when... When we were messaging back and forth about because is there a format to this dumb questions you want to ask? And I went, and sometimes when, especially sports people, they let a lot of time they want to know from you know literally from minute one to minute yeah whatever. What are we going to be asking? And I normally go, is here's one I did yeah, earlier. Yeah, but it's it's more so because like especially with a sports person, you know, you're you're getting someone who is fairly elite at playing a sport and yeah. sometimes not always a personality not that they don't have a personality but that kind of showmanship like that they show on the field doesn't translate into speaking of course so yeah. it can be quite an awkward scenario to sit down and answer questions when you're not prepared because it's that social anxiety to yeah of course. I'll talk shit to the wall if it talk back to me like but I, that, that's what that's what i was getting to is that like with a sports person what i do is i normally send them on one or two sports yeah. ones to go oh no not listen we don't even have to talk about your sport if you don't want yeah, to yeah yeah we can just talk about whatever you want. The crack. The crack and growing trees or whatever you want. Yeah. Licking psilocybin mushrooms. I don't mind whatever you're into. <laughs> whatever you like to do with your spare time. But like, <laughs> I have full confidence in your ability when you were going, is there a format here or what? And I went, not to, oh, we just have the crack. Yeah. And that uh, you'll know. Because it, you, I need only watch 10 seconds of, say, the likes of your stuff or go, she'll be grand. Yeah. Just, just flip the switch, she'll go. Yeah. Because, but the, in, the, in fairness, after once you heard that, you were like, "Oh, that's fine. That's, that's fine. That's, I, fine. I, that's fine." Once, once, yeah, it's more so when there's like structure to it. I'm like structure. Ugh. Now I'm be very organized and I like structure, but when it comes to being asked questions and stuff like that, I'm like, "Oh, so if I have to prepare an answer for something, I just it nearly like 
I wouldn't do this. the crack out of it. I wouldn't know? do this podcast if that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? If it was that. This is your life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I see here, Louise, back in 2003, you were into the Spice Girls. Now, tell me, it, like that now. It was a dark time for us all. You know? <laughs> it was a dark time. We all got I through like it together. To those times. We all got through it together. <laughs> steps, steps were like the, the, the stepping off drug. They were just... <laughs> oh my god! I actually saw Spice Girls when they had their reunion tour. It was brilliant. Of course it was because I was absolutely Herbie two point fully loaded for the gig. Can't oh, yeah. remember most of it, but it was great fun. I think. Yeah, it's great. The the but the likes of the I mean you you're gonna get a show regardless oh, yeah. even if you weren't into the Spice Girls. I could go. I couldn't even see the stage. I was that like, oh I was in the nose please. But you're like we had to crack. That's all that mattered. You were on the stage too. So yeah, but sure I was. <laughs> Literally, there's no. she poured an egg and a whiskey into her coffee as just as we sat down. Just, and you're just, driving, you're just, driving away yeah, from this just, too. Just before I drove here, yeah. <laughs> and we'll drive and away. And we'll drive. I know. Right, don't be at that now. My daddy, we listen to this. Retired Sergeant. Trump. Oh, of course. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Good Lord, most sweet Jesus. It's a comedy podcast, Dad. It's a comedy podcast. Ha, Not everything ha, ha, will be on hundred percent sure. High tip flask. <laughs> <laughs> I do, as I've often found, sergeants, daughters, and sons tend to be the wildest. That's uh, a common misconception. Is it? Yes. Well, I have met a couple that you go, uh-huh. that It makes sense. Yes. Yeah, I think it can go one of two ways. Um, I think if they're limited fairly, like if there's a lot of limitations on you when you're younger, that you tend to break away from the yeah. limitations and go mad. Whereas we, we have a very lax household and we get on, there's a, there's a mutual respect between the siblings and, and the parents. Like, yeah. So we all get on really well. Not <laughs> the way you make it sound like the board of management, honestly, uh, as yeah. it's staff. Uh, we all get on really well. We will keep managing the management in place for a couple of years at least. <laughs> it's been quite successful. I know, but like, with the, Daddy didn't come down very hard, hard on us at all. Like, So there was never any reason to rebel. So... And that I used to be painfully shy, so... Were you? I know, I know. What? You wouldn't even think it, yeah. No, now this is making the... It, this is actually making sense, because you're like, when did you drop the handbrake, so... Or when did... She's always trying to say, when did you drop the hand? I was like, I'm not. <laughs> Good Lord. Not, what? I was like, this took a turn. <laughs> on life, Tom. On life. I dropped the hand <laughs> I dropped on the life. hand on life when I was about 21. I know. No, I used to be like... Because I was bullied quite badly when I was in primary school. And I kind of carried that through my teenage years. And I had to do an awful lot of work on myself to come out of my shell. So that's one thing I kind of get across in my content is like people look at me and think, Jesus, in the great to be like that. I'm like, yeah. it didn't happen overnight. Do you know, it took an awful lot of work. And once you're proactive about looking after yourself and going and get yourself sorted, you can get there too. But it's not going to happen unless you do something about it. And was, who was the, the driving factor in getting you? Did you, like, did you seek help? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I went to a counsellor, yeah, and had a good chat. In what, in, by the time you were in secondary school, or was it still junior school? No, or? it like, completely manifested it in my first year of college. Oh, I ended up, like, dropping out of college, and then I went and got all the help, and just totally kind of reformed my whole outlook on life. Who was, who gave you that tip? Or were you like, I need help here? Like, oh, yeah, well, I suppose it was years of repressing the same stuff, so I was repressing, repressing, and then a breakdown of a relationship, and I just completely wasn't able to function because it all just kind of came back to the surface. Yeah. So that, that was kind of the catalyst that made me go talk to someone. And like, I suffered really badly with anxiety for years. So going to talk to someone really helped me understand what I was feeling, kind of give me coping mechanisms that I never had before and just allowed me to be myself. Like. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You kind of like, I think when you're younger, especially if you're bullied, you care so much about what people think of course. you. Of you. you want everyone to like you. But, you know, not everyone's going to like it. And you know that from being in comedy. Like, but I've got to the point now where I'd rather be someone's shot of whiskey than some everyone's cup of tea. Oh, jeez, I like that. Yeah. I like, but, like that. That's, but for, for years, I wanted to be the cup of tea. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, listen. Oh, the tea. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love tea. You know, I'm mad for a cup of tea here and there. But... It's fair boring sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sometimes fair boring. Yeah, no. Just be yourself, like. Listen, there's that too in, in stand-up. Like, where there's this, oh, this absolute beige... Shit, and I will call it that. It's the do you know it's gas up there and I'm like, I don't give one fuck. You are absolutely hitting no high notes there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in like we're just talking with PJ that owns owns the Cavanas. This podcast has been brought to you by Cavanas of Port Leash. Cavanas, Port Leash. Stop in for a pint, they're decent. <laughs> That's it. No, that's the most and, po- and cut, cut. <laughs> that's the most port leash. It's not amazing. It's 
they're decent. They're, and ba- actually, they're basic. You can't ask for much more. But I was chatting with him downstairs and we were talking about um, a, a couple of big name comedians. And they were saying, you know, there's how they they want they want the entire they want to be so whited out with with the lights that they because they do not want to see the audience. Yeah. And I'm like, and these are long running comics, so you can't assume. I well, I, knowing both of who he was talking about, I was like, well, they they don't mind seeing the audience, and it's, so it ain't a nervous thing. I and mean, when you're 30 years in the game, like you're. You know, and you're you're the, you're the king of what you do. Mm. You can't be that, bo- so it isn't a nervous thing. So you literally have that little respect, because it ain't a money thing at that point. Because you're you're crushing it money wise. Yeah, I would sooner play this venue here than play a huge venue because you can see Breda's nostrils sitting here. Yeah, I can see Sean's eyes there, and everything they give you is one hundred percent in that moment. Yeah. But well, also, you kind of rely on the reactions of the audience to feed into your performance, you know? And I, I do. Because sometimes you would need to switch things up to, to get the people going. To oh, yeah. Like, we've uh, there's been a couple of mad ones here. This like this is a perfect room to reference. Like, I remember doing... Uh, it was a, it was kind of a rollover gig. There was the... They had Halloween howls. Mm. It was kind of a comedy oh, yeah, festival over the yeah. weekend. And they had two shows on, one immediately after the other. The first one was Wild. I think Bernard O'Shea was on, or whatever, local mm. local boy. And they were steamboats in here. Mm. And a lot of the people here had bought tickets to the next show. So they were just staying. Yeah. So I'm like, oh no, it's home time for most of you lads. This is home time. Yeah. And I was hosting the show and I went, it was going off the rails badly. Like, and for a finish, all I did was, I, I, it just went wild. I yeah. ended up bringing one of the mad jokes on stage. None, like, none of this was scripted. How are you? Hey, how's it going? How are you? Yeah, great. That's good. <laughs> You're all right. You're all right. But it was in that that thing where you couldn't do it if it was a huge venue. What what we ended yeah. up doing that night? It just yeah. because of the wildness of it, you could only control it because you could so see the people's faces. Yeah. But the enjoyment I I would get, I, like I do stand up because I love stand up, not because mm. I need to feel good about myself. It's not like, for validation. It's not for validation. It certainly isn't anymore. Yeah. And it certainly isn't after lockdown. And the privilege that it is that yeah. people would pay to come and see me tell them jokes that I've written for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to have the disrespect, I think, personally, of, uh, I want to bleach me out so much that I can't see the audience because then you may as well be doing a Zoom gig. Yeah. You're going, what? What's you the crack? You may as well just hand them the piece of paper to read off. Like. This is, and I, I mean, that's, I could not grasp my, the way, and that's why the likes of this up here and this is where I'm going the long way around saying so when do we start you doing stand-up comedy is what I'm trying to say Louise Glessy oh, <laughs> it's in the pipeline it definitely is in the pipeline it's something I, I'm, I'm working on um, I've got some good mentors in place Stephen Kelly Kelly uh-huh. um, who is on to me every day of my every second day are you focusing on your seven minutes are you writing are you doing this are you doing that I'm like oh Jesus Christ but you know it's keeping me ac- accountable for it mm. um, so uh, he's on to me about opening up for him in that loan on the 22nd. 22nd of? Yeah, of December. But I kind of said, look, I'll MC it. I'll introduce the gig. I'll introduce the acts like they're going to be on the stage. Yeah. And, maybe just, and he was like, yeah, because I'll give you confidence on the stage. Because, do you know, I would be good with a microphone. I'd be good MCing. But yeah. When it comes to writing the content that I would deliver in a show over and over again, that's something I'm going to need to work on because, like, English is my first language, but it doesn't come that naturally to me, you know? <laughs> you don't look like you speak that way. You don't look like you speak like you, you talk speak. funny. <laughs> you talk kind of funny. Yeah, so it's more so trying to find, because I've been advised to stick with what I know, and what do I know? <laughs> leash. Oh, lovely leash. <laughs> um, what else do I know? Pines. And yeah, but it's just trying to find a happy balance of something I, I'm well able to talk about and be funny about. But the, the, you see the format of it too, you're going to, you could, you're going to have to write it and rewrite it and you will rewrite. Like I just taught it, and it was actually more of a, a thing for me to see, could stand up be taught? Yeah. Because I always believed it could not be taught, taught. But it was put to me, for some money, <laughs> to a <laughs> corporate company, would I do this? And I went, Can't yeah. Explain. But I, I, I came up with a formula over a six week period to take 10 people okay. and create stand-ups out of them. Right. Through every, and I mean, I drilled them. I drilled them into the ground. Like, and one, they, they all came up trumps, but one in particular came up trumps phenomenally. Okay. Like to the next stage that if she pushed on and dropped her job, she's, 
She has it. She has the it. Thing. Yeah. The thing, the thing you're born with, not the thing that you. Yeah. Now, it can't be taught. It can. It can. Uh, it can. It be. Yeah. But when she, but what was so lucky was it was almost like polishing a diamond that yeah, you yeah. found that looked like an old normal stone. Mm. All the other normal stones look the same, but there, it's the format is mm. that you'll find when you do write because I, I mean, there's so much like leash. Like the way to, to you would even approach leash with somebody in Monaghan would be I know you may know nothing about leash. Leash is where happiness goes to die. You know, like it, ju, ju, there's that's a formula to get him in the door, and then you can go on about what it does is it goes come yeah. on in, and even like just like just I'm always getting slagged for being in a landlocked county and you know not being anywhere near the sea, and I make fun of myself an awful lot for that when I enter into scenarios. Like the first thing I said when I was in Westport on the weekend with Northern Hemisphere. I said, I'm delighted to be here. You know, I don't get to be beside the sea very often. It's kind of a bit of a privilege for yeah, me. Yeah. And it's, it was an island off of Westport as well. I was like, we don't, I don't know if you know the sea there, we don't have many islands. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And even like a lovely leash has is something like um, 20 years ago today when I first sailed away. It's not as easy to sail away from leash as you might think. Do you know? Well, there you go. You, got, you, can't, you can't sail in the bog. You know, <laughs> highlight your bog. You got a good sized bog. I love my bog. I, I, do you know, I like leash. It's I, a nice bog. I... <laughs> It's my bog. It's a, it's my a good, bog. It's a good bog. <laughs> I, which I do like it here because there's a humble is the wrong word, but there's a very normal vibe to it here. In that, I did hear it old, and I remember bringing the test was I brought. I, I was casting a one man play that we toured the Ar- mm. I toured the Ireland, we toured the island of Ireland with, and we came to Leash, and it sold well. I was like, fair, Jesus, fair play. People come out to see a play, and it was a, it was a comedy or whatever. But what I like about Leash people is. There's, there's still enough of an upbeat vibe about him because you go to some counties and there's, there's no crack at all. You draw enough like you, Well, you're just trying to pull life out of him and then you well, go to other counties and they're like, oh, we're amazing, by the way, did I tell you that? It's, it's, e- it's easy for you to come here and to have to crack because if you're playing with a, in a venue like Cavanaugh's Port Leash, if you're playing in a venue like Cavanaugh's Port Leash, which is smack bang in the middle of Main Street, which I'm not sure if you've noticed, has about 150 pubs. It has quite a lot of pubs. That's all we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're built on the foundation of crack crack and uh, pints but I crack and pints and you know what you'd never think of it but Port Leash would be a savage spot for a stag the train station is right up there there's a hotel and the, the street is just fully pubs I don't I don't know why it isn't more like Ennis gets a great name and like you see I don't think it's far away enough from places that's the yeah that should be the, the reference for Port Leash never too far away like that that should be it's actually on the sign instead outside. of the road out no <laughs> <laughs> no but that should be the sign coming into Port Leash you're not too far away now yeah do you know from home think, like, think of that drive home it's not know? it's not too far like if you're down in if you're stagging from let's say Dublin and you, you head to Ken Mayer that's a horror of a drive back oh, with, hang, with a head on you do you know what I mean you want to be booking a Monday off for that one Port Leash that's 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 a selling point. Doable. It's not. Too, oh yeah, listen, I have done it, and the nightmare of Ken Mayer. You've heard of twelve pubs of Christmas, but have you heard of the hundred and fifty pubs of Port Leash of Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to complete it and failed every time. It's a good. I do. I like it here because there's no uppityness in people now. Because ah, uh, you'll find it if you look for it. You will here. Listen, you'll find that in <laughs> Tip Town. But like, what I'm saying is. You find counties who probably, you know, who do really well, say, a GA yeah. or whatever, and they have an awful notion of themselves. And counties then that do Midland a GA, and they're fierce sad. But whatever it is about Leash, Leash tips away at its GA, but it's, there seems to be a nice at club, even at, deal. At club level. Club though, level, yeah. In club level, definitely. County-wise, no, you wouldn't probably have the same level of um, notions. I like it, but there's, there's a self-deprecation to it, too. It's like... Our leash, Yay. you know, where you go to Cavan, and Cavan genuinely think they're going to compete every year at the football. Line. Listen, going, I, it's, it's, it's been a terrible two years to be a leash supporter, but I have to support it anyway, and it's hard. It's hard <laughs> every time I'm going, but I, you know, if you don't have hope, what do you have? That's you have absolutely <laughs> nothing. You might as well be pissing into the wind. You have absolutely nothing. This is, you know, another, that's another slogan for, for leash. If you don't have hope. You've absolutely not. Let's see. <laughs> At least we've hope. <laughs> hope for what? Not so sure on the on what, but we have hope. Plenty of it. When did the the when did social social media 
when social. Did it, social. <laughs> when did this become a thing where you're kind of going, all right, here, this is kind of working. Like, when did it, not that it feels like work, because you seem like you're having a right good crack, but like, we all have social media, we've all had it yeah. from, from yonks ago, like, but, and yonks, that's not a word I've used in, literally yonks. You, you brought out a I'm retro re- word. I'm, I'm bringing out the nostalgia in you. It's a that. retro 2004 take word. Take wow. my small victories. Class. Um, well, to be honest, I think I have such crack at it because I don't rely on it as an income. Yeah. You know, I think you find that people who are on social media that put everything into it, they gave up everything and put everything into it, it shows. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Every second video is an ad, this and that. Like, I get sent stuff all the time, but like, it's... I'll put up stuff and kind of be funny about it rather than be like, oh, buy this. I'll be like, you're sending me wax. Why are you trying to say it? <laughs> that I'm hairy. That's awful. But like, no, like it kind of started at, uh, like like most people with social media that worked on it previous to lock- lockdown, really. I was, was bored. I worked in finance. <laughs> finance head didn't have much room for personality or any kind of creativity or just punching numbers yeah. and every month kind of robotic stuff and I was just bored at home and I just started messing around and to be honest I kind of started on TikTok thinking Jay's the dog going to make me famous my number one thought for me was my dog is going to make and to be fair the dog did do well but the ego got too big the agent kicked in it was like, I can't have <laughs> listen dog I can't afford to pay these bills <laughs> No, but like Taz, he's a German Shepherd. He's absolutely my same size as me. He's a big yolk. And <laughs> he, he is. He's large as hell. Like. That's going in your bio. <laughs> big yolk. Big yolk from leash. Goes down to pints. Never rallied or raced or ever went sideways. <laughs> but you'll murder a pint. Murder a lot of things. Um, no, so I thought the dog would get me famous. But sure, Chiz, that was like, I don't know clutching at straws I thought really tall because he's so good looking and then I just started messing around doing lip syncs and stuff like that I do quite a bit of um, I did quite a bit of South Park lip sync oh very good start. and like I'm very good with lyrics and stuff like that like I've always been told that if I was like as good at life as I am I remember lyrics I'd be fucking flying it <laughs> need to say I'm not as good at life so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not flying it but it kind of took off from there and, and I kind of got my first thousand followers on TikTok and you can go live when you, when, when you get your first thousand followers. So I was going live every Sunday watching the NFL. So like I'm big into sport. So I was watching the NFL and then I kind of grew a kind of a fan base that were Irish and into the NFL and that grew. You cute whore. Oh, listen. You cute whore because the NFL is the new, it is like the new Skoda Octavia. They were huge back in 2008 when everybody thought this is great it's cheaper than a sash but it's a great car and now the NFL is the same thing in that people are going uh-huh. bars are starting to open up for the NFL and stuff like well, that well I, I was always into the NFL oh fair yeah, enough yeah. fair so, enough so it, it's no it's no it's no new baby to me but um, kind of that's kind of what I knew yeah. so I kind of I was like I was kind of nervous going on the camera at first and then I was just there watching games and reacting to games and that kind of grew from there and then I was doing, I play GA, so I was doing quite a bit of GA content, and it was just, I just, I, there's no point where I can even pinpoint where it took off. Yeah. But I had like a core following for the South Park stuff where they'd always be like, when's the next South Park video? And the same, but like the GA stuff, um, the the NFL stuff, and then sure, I started doing the podcast off the leash. I don't know, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Dave Cody and, um, and and Bob Flavin and that and then sure I had a, a following of farmers and roadheads and everything I was like I don't even know how to appeal to this clientele <laughs> like, <laughs> I like I like cars but I can't for the life of me talk about them um and then I kind of started working with a few brands and it just grew and grew and I just to be honest being on social media gave me this. Um, newfound confidence so kind of like what I said similar similar area about my accent like yeah that I would have always been brought up thinking and not through my family or anything like that because geez they all talk the same as I do <laughs> <laughs> my, my older brother in particular is even Imagine worse you all have the exact same voice even just sitting around the table <laughs> yeah. hey lad uh, pass the salt I know um, <laughs> but I kind of would have been afraid to use my own voice on video so I did quite a bit of lip sync at the start and then I did a couple of videos with my voice and people were like, oh my God, I love your accent. Uh-huh. And I was like, sorry, what? Did you just say it to me? Did you say it again? Please, one more time. <laughs> just one, one more time, please. I didn't quite hear you the first time. 
Um, and they were like, no, we love your accent. So I started doing more and the videos of me just talking and being myself did really well. And it gave me a confidence. Yeah. You know? Because for years I would have thought, geez, I hate my voice, the sound of that going. Oh, hey, listen. Yeah. Now I listen to myself talk all day, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a recording immediately so you can drive home this Great. Yeah, yeah. It's not that far of a drive. <laughs> just keep circling the time yeah. until you're finished. <laughs> Doing laps like But that's isn't that a class thing about social media as a result the end result of it in the in the real world flip mm. back to you, then it was like I feel better about me. you. I literally feel better about yourself as a result of yeah. Like there was times where I like, oh, you get the TikTok particularly. I don't get it on Instagram, but on TikTok is a cesspool for abuse, like is it? like proper proper hard abuse, like. And Dave could have gave me great um, uh, advice. He said, "Don't take in the good comments." And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "If you take in the good comments, it gives you this false sense of security that when you get a bad one, it completely knocks you." Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the comments don't even register with me now. Like, I said, I will go through comments and I'll respond in a funny way to the majority of them. Yeah. But they don't register it with me. Like, I'll read them, but it just doesn't, doesn't sit in me. Like, it yeah. would have, other times, like, people would have said stuff, it would have sat with me. And then I'd, like, have to take, like, social media breaks. Like, yeah. they'd be like, Jesus, this, they don't even know what they've done to me. Like, I have to take a break from this. I'm exhausted. But, like, it's, it's the people that are around you in your close circle that know you, their opinions matter. It is. These people, you don't even, you never want to meet them. Like, That's tough. Why does it matter? It, like, the reality is they haven't put much thought into what, it's literally just type with their thumb and then they walk away. And for you then to hang on to that, you're gone. Like, that's doing you no justice at all. Yeah. You're gone, like, all, I've only seen it, again, because I suppose, like, they, there's probably, I don't, I don't know. They just probably figure it to a point. But it's funny when you put up, at when I make a statement of sorts, like how, like I did, I'm, I'm brutal for keeping a series going of things. Like I do this thing called Irish History Fits. Okay. F-E-C-T-S. Okay. Fits. Fit. Fit. It's a fit. It's a fit. It's a fit. And these ridiculous things like yeah. aluminium cans were invented in Roscommon as a result Which of... is not a real place. Yeah, things like this, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and, and the reason why, like John yeah. Bon Jovi, you know, it's originally from Leach and this is where he wrote, you yeah. know, and, but the amount of people that were right underneath going, uh, I think you'll find, and you're like, oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. You absolute dipshit. Yeah. Like, I you get feel, a, The engagement you're giving me from feeding into it. That's right. That's a new thing I've started doing now. If I get a bad comment, I'm like, oh, thank you for commenting. It really helps my engagement. Love yeah. you. Yeah, you're feeding the monster. Keep it going. Keep it yeah. going. But it kind of brings it back kind of full circle to what you ask about, like, social media and, and it being, like, have me having the crack on it. Like, I feel like I can have the crack on it because it's a hobby to me. Yeah. Okay, right. Nothing is, there's nothing balanced on it, like. Well, no, not at all. Like, I said, I really enjoy it and I have such fun and I love working with brands and and all, the, all that goes along with it. But... I feel like if I was reliant on it, I don't think it would be the same. Of course. The outcome of it wouldn't be the same anyway. Output. I suppose it becomes work then and the the, the, the danger of failure has a bigger consequence, doesn't but it? But also the industry is so volatile. Like of course you're never is. you're never fully secure and I like a bit of security meaning. You're do you know what you're a hundred and but it sure goes across the whole ways that when taking any of these tweets like this is the thing like people get so violent about Twitter and stuff. I'm like it's just only words. Yeah. Did you ever get a belt of a hurley across the back of the legs? Mm. That's way worse than somebody calling you bollocks online. Trust me. I call me bollocks all day. Mm. You think a tweet is bad? Imagine being from Leash. You <laughs> when you're trying to eat your hurley. Yeah. You don't know what to do with the thing, God bless you. <laughs> you're trying to feed the family with hurley. Like. <laughs> Buy a hurley for lunch again today. <laughs> oh, God. Is there anything to go with? Half slitter. I tell you what, there isn't. Oil. There's no alarm final to go with it, so shut, shut up and eat your heart. Oh, no, that was a second. I know, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I, you, did, you, you didn't need to go there. I didn't Jesus. at all, actually. And I'm, I, you know what, I retract that statement. I'm very, very sorry. There's, we, I wasn't even going to speak sport, but... So while we're on the matter... Uh, <laughs> go on, then. Go on. Give, give me your worst. Is, is it... Uh, you play GA? I play football, yeah. Class. Yeah, I played, I played rugby and I played AFL as well. But sure, I absolutely banjacked my spine. Um, couldn't play that anymore. And hold on, you you how, you bench at your spine in the AFL, rugby, 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 high tackle. You know, big bitch like me. Big big, big yoke. Big yoke. Where did you play in rugby? 
I started a full back, moved to the wing, moved in to first centre. You're a tall winger, like. Yeah, yeah. I could run fast, like. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I don't, I don't Imagine you'd be a nightmare, then big long legs now, big old knee, knees hitting you in the face. And I'm strong as well. Yeah. Big yoke. Big, a big mulligan yeah. leash one. <laughs> Oh, I just want to play for the lads for a bit. Absolute tank. I am. Um, I honestly, I think I would have been okay if I stayed at full back or even on the wing. I moved into first centre then. It was crash ball all day, and yeah. that's where I did all the damage. Like, but we fellas like me is where first centres are supposed to be. That's where I was about fifteen stone at my height when I played first centre, and mm. it never took a deck of difference to me because I was yeah. just I'm squat built anyway. So it was like. Yeah. I played a little bit of fly half and I loved that because like the kicking from football yeah, of course. Was, that was great I'm sure I think I was just too much of a force to be put in there <laughs> I loved that <laughs> I was too strong like I was too but sure it's the same, same in football I'd always be blown for charging and I'm like sure it's not my fault she bounces off me like when I'm running like, Tell her can you keep out of my keep out of my road and no problem Okay, I'll try not to drop the shoulder when I'm running. Okay, it's not that easy. Like I love that, that this female Sean O'Brien like just just milling everybody. Just go what, what? <laughs> oh, that's a great compliment. I'll take that. The, the female Sean O'Brien. The portly, the leash tank. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh-huh. But and and I mean, the idea that if uh, to flip it back the other way for anybody kind of going that they were bullied in school or bullied at a diff- at different points in their life probably could possibly either be bullied in, like the notion that like you're milling people you're larger than your average girl or whatever larger you're taller and stronger than your average girl the, you the, can say large I'm not offended it's grand but large I suppose large could be I mean, you big hair you know what I mean you could be large in any way like I have yeah. large hair right now so I mean it couldn't I have yes. a large moustache so uh, you have majestical hair on you. It's, it. it's all gone. It'll be all cut in Steve's Barbershop uh, next weekend for, for charity. What charity? Uh, the Prado Willy Syndrome. Oh. It's, 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 a, lo- it's a chromosome syndrome okay. that not many people... It's a, it's a tough one. I was talking about it. Again, I, don't know, I didn't know enough about charities to... What do I give? And so many of the popular ones are going, well, I'm sure they're getting plenty of funding from... Yeah, it's the ones, it's the ones that, that don't have quite a lot of um, exposure that need the help. Like. I think so. And it was... I, I I was just going to cut it off anyway, but my wife was like, ah, you have to do it for charity. Mm. And we, we both know this chap whose son, uh, he suffers from the condition. Yeah. And it's phenomenal. Like, he's, he, what they come under a lot of times is an insatiable hunger. They don't have the cutoff point. Okay. And uh, very tough, because imagine being, conti- like, you talked about the anger. Like, can you imagine being continuous yeah. and just not knowing the cutoff point? But, um, yeah, and I put it up on, on I said, listen, and I, I put, like, Andrew Bocelli's time to say goodbye underneath it as well. Like, oh, this is very sad. There's going to be vigils outside the house. Yeah. Um, but straight away, like, we reached our limit. We reached uh, our goal within an hour. That's amazing. It was like, okay, I'm going to leave this up for the month. If anybody wants to give, give more, but it's coming off now. It's got to come off yeah. now. So we're cutting it off. Like. We're kind of thinking of, so every Christmas, myself and my brother, like, my younger brother is the male version of me. Like, he's the exact same person. Like, <laughs> Just I going around, like, smashing people he's on like the page. My, he's like my twin. He literally is like my twin. Um, exact same person but we do on Christmas we just get absolutely sloshed on Christmas nice. we do 24 cans Christmas nice and I, we were kind of like jeez we should do it for charity you, you know, absolutely like, should I would love to but then you run the risk of it being like you're promoting alcoholism you know that kind of way and I don't want to be that but also there's so many people that follow it along like. listen Jerry McBride does one follow do you, like if you've ever come across McBride he, myself have a podcast he writes for Water Whispers mm. and he has a, we have a podcast called the Tom and Jerry show what else are you going to call it like, but he does he does twenty four bottles of Christmas. Yeah. And he went, I can't do a serious, serious chat. So like last year he did one for the Hedgehogs of Ireland. Okay. There's, there's one to rescue hedgehogs, like. Yeah. And he did one another year for the donkeys. Okay. The donkey sanctuary. Well, so I'm a big animal lover, so that would be great. So, so if you that, yeah. if you don't want to go, because as soon as you tip your toe into helping humans and yeah, yeah, referencing yeah. the, t- yeah. So I think there's at least a, a soft crossover there. That's a good idea. I'm going to do or that. Just do it to raise funds for your local GA or whatever you want to do it. But no, you should. Them. They don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> they have enough money, the bastards. I actually worked with one. I worked, I taught uh, an acting class to, it's just outside Leash. What's it called? Place oh, Jesus, there is. It's, it can be south of here. What is the name of the village? Become an R. Rosenhaus? No. Brad Downey. Right. I think it was Rat Downey. Rat Downey. Rat Downey. Yeah. Oh, they were Rat Downey. You can't say the T H. No, there's not even a T. Not even Rat. Rat. 
Radoni. Yeah. Radoni, so straight to the D. Radoni. Down straight to the square in Radoni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tried, like we were doing, there were short versions of, of well known movies, and like there was a few points where people were going, So should I do the accent? I'm like, Absolutely not. There is, you you will do a crossover between an American accent and your accent. Let's just go straight to your accent because yeah, yeah. there's no, there's no good shaking that ever mm. off your system. Like, yeah. so we just stuck with it. But it was definitely, the 24, like you must be, are you hammered? What, 24 cans of the same stuff? No, I, it's a blessing and a curse. I'm unnatural drinking. Are you? Oh, it's the, I don't, I don't know. Like even, um, <laughs> we were there, like I keep referring back to the weekend in Westport, but they had a keg of Guinness and we were drinking. And I started drinking pints of Guinness from one o'clock. Pints of Guinness are like small lunches. Yeah, like, oh yeah. Heavy, like, I drank, I was drinking at like four o'clock in the morning. At one point, one of the lads goes to me, Jeez, you love pints. How many is that now? And I'm like, shut up, I'm on my holidays. And then Stephen said, I'm like Paddy Glossy's love child. Yeah, like, you were still continuously drinking pints of Guinness. Yeah. And through the day. But that's the, but also I have this thing that I'll drink and I could be absolutely flailing, but I'm completely coherent and have a conversation and act like oh, an hour functioning. Sne- yeah. You sneaky whore. I might, that's good now. That's... Now I mightn't remember, but like, it's, oh, it's, and, Sh- and my brother Sean is the exact same. Go away, two, yeah. a- another animal. And my older brother same. The three of us. I don't know. Ma- I don't know where mum and dad got us. To be honest, because they're not big drinkers at all. Maybe that's it. Maybe they saved up enough in their genetics that you're actually living vicariously sh- as a result of it. Three absolute tanks for beer. <laughs> Septic, really. I would love it. Like, and the thing is, like, if the other two look anything like you, you look like three athletes walking in who would be pissed on the smell of it. Like, and all of a sudden. You're just hammering it through like some big fat bloke, some 30 stone fat and bloke. And all three of us are called, our nicknames are Cody. So you could three of us there drinking pints. Someone says, Cody, three of us go, <laughs> like squirrel looking around. Who said that? Like the only, like if you're able to drink from one to four in the morning. Like and it, the only reason I stopped was because I had to drive the next day. So I was like, I need to rain in here and sneak off to bed. And I'll Irish goodbye. Like you should be wearing a white shirt with your belly out here and braces. Well, to and be fair. The, the shirt opened down to about here and a hairy chest, even though you are a woman, a hairy chest out to here. And yeah, woman, the sleeves woman, rolled up. I could very well have a hairy chest. I mean, it's a, it's a complex Hey, panel. listen. Um, a, you could be they, them. I don't mind. It's, it's a good a balance. Open. No, like, as in, I, I actually had this conversation with someone who met me the other day. It's a good balance she to be able to be an animal to drink. She goes, you're either, you're either training for the 24 cans of Christmas or you're a gym girl. You can't be both. Pick one or it'll expose you. And I said... <laughs> It's only November and December where I go wrong. Like, so silly season starts for me in November because my birthday's in November. Ah. For sure, for the rest of the year, I'll be playing sport. And then even when I'm beer and I'm flat in the gym all the time. So I'm constantly like chipping away at the damage I'm doing to my liver for the two months of the year. Like, goes for... And then, of course, you have your matches. So after matches, I'll go drinking during the year as well. But it's not at all as mad during the year as it is in November and December. So the first couple of weeks in November, you're like... like I... I'm like, it's my birthday month. Are you are you strong drink wise? Are you tight? Do you know what I mean? Are the muscles tight? Do you need to f- like? Is there a proverbial training. drink drink version of a train like a warm up? Like no, you, no, straight I in. Don't, I don't lose the tolerance. Like. Don't you? No, I don't know what story. Oh Jesus, I do. If I haven't been like, if I haven't been steady drinking, say like gigging heavy gigging season, right now where I'm not getting to drink half as much as I love, I I'll be shite. Like, come Christmas Day now, I'll be flame boat. Like, after 10 cans now, I'll be rotten. I'll be <laughs> like, rotten. So, uh, myself and Stephen did a video where I did a lip sync of his sound, and he comes into the background of it, and he posts it on his page, and someone commented underneath. It was like, Jay's like, buy her pints all day. And Stephen was like, careful, she'll drink 45 of them and go back to 10 more. And, <laughs> and listen, it's true. Like, I was we were even trying to figure out how many pints I had in when we were in Westport. And I said it to my brother Sean, I was like, just I think I definitely had at least 30 pints. He's like, there's no way you had 30 pints. I'm like, Sean, I'm telling you, I, the limit does not exist. I don't know how many I had, but I had so what many. What are you made of? Like, because you're not holding that. Like, are you made of starch or turf but or something? But even like what? that, like, just, to, just this might be too much information. But if I go out drinking, like, I won't even break the seal for ages. Like, how many enough. pints before you have to take your first one with? I could I could literally be on drinking for like at least three four hours before I even need to go back. So that could be like five six pints. Yeah, ah, more than that. I'm a fast drinker. I'm a bit of a fish. Do you, do you, oh, you don't you don't come back the gears at all. No, you don't go cruising like a, from point four onwards. No, 
You just stay. Well, I could too. You know, but when you're chatting shy, you kind of tend to slow down when you're chatting shy, and I do a fair bit of that, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder what you're... Like, we need to test you. Like, you might be the... This is podcast too coming soon where we test the beer. <laughs> well, oh, Jesus, yeah. Actually, PJ would definitely sponsor that. He would definitely sponsor He's up for anything to do with having the crack and pints. We should actually do that. Yeah, 100%. But we, we should bring in, like, some sort of medical specialist that can actually monitor, like, I don't know. Check my blood pressure. Like check more. something that's going on. Like, yeah, what's going right on? Because, like, 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 what are you made of that you can actually process it that fast? Like, you might, have, you might have some sort of genetics that maybe we could use, I don't know, in advancing humans. Yeah, maybe. But, like, then you look at how I can drink pints and then I'm very immunocompromised. Like, as in, I'd be sick all the time. But... <laughs> <laughs> like, I said that. I, any bit of a cold or flu going, I'd be struck down like a sick note. Like, so no, I'm well able for points. Oh, but yeah. the old common flu or a cold will knock me for six. Like, maybe we should try and curtail one to help the other. I ah, fuck that actually. Yeah, yeah. Good crack on the points. Like, yeah, does, no. They invented Lemsip for a reason. It doesn't fucking work. Does it not? No, especially so, if you overdose on it. Does any, <laughs> so yeah, does medical stuff work on you? Like, if you were thrown so, like, is it? Are you just a, a, just a waste of time to give you anything, really, when it comes to any sort of substance? What do you mean? Like, drink don't make an effect on you. Oh, well, it like, has, ah, no, it has an effect, but not to the extent... Well, like, you told me you can still stay upright after yeah. drinking for nearly 20 hours. Yeah, but I'm brazen, like... Yeah, but that's not human. Like, to be able to stay hard drinking yeah. for 20 hours, you're not a 45 stone man. Like, no. only yeah, those tanks can normally deal with that. Like, maybe, hey, oh, maybe, you I, maybe you identify as a 45 yeah. <laughs> stone I identify as a 45 In stone man. In a past man. life, I was actually a, an army tank. <laughs> Made of metal. We call her the... Tink, get rid of classic tink, Audi. It's... The uh, tank! The, the tank. The panzer. The it's, panzer. It's not even the tank. It's D apostrophe tank. The yes, tank. the tank. But... So there must be something like so. Do, does any medical stuff take it like so? If you're taking lemsip, waste of time. If you're taking a day and night benzoin, waste of time. What I'm saying is like stuff just passes through you, not a bother like. Yeah. You must be made of turf or something. <laughs> I've never been to the bog. You've never been to no. the bog. No. Some people are always going cutting turf. I've never been there. Nobody's ever been to the bog. Like always, I would say zero point one percent of the population, and it seems to be a very popular thing. I for always like, hear people shouting on about being cutting turf in the bog. Off to go to the bog. I'm like, what? What do you mean you have to go? So if my dad turned around to me and said you have to go to the bog, I'd be like, I don't have to do anything. I'm not going. It seems to. Be, I lived. I lived. Uh, we lived in Broadford one time. It's, it'd be kind of on the Kildare Leash border. It'd be, but it's and. They were all going on about the bog, going to the bog. And it would seem that fellas, farmers, have their own little patch of bog. Mm. And they would drag their sons and, ju- and, and daughters yeah. to the bog during the summer. But that was one tiny enclave of people. And when you start looking at it, you're like, you're all talking about bogs, lads. There's almost nobody going to bogs. Why are you trying to summarise this thing as being a popular thing? Did you bring the fascate and the ham sandwich as well, you did? And the midges are going to eat you. And they'll eat you alive. Sounds to me like a lot of lazy children being put to work by their parents who are whinging as a result of it like oh jeez get with it There's, you're getting free free actual fuel for your family home out of the ground mm. thank your lucky stars yeah almost nobody else can do that also I would be I would be one of the people to whinge and have to go I wouldn't be doing that now way out of going to the bog yeah, to be fair yeah to be fair <sighs> but to be fair I'm from town so or you, yeah, you see, this is the thing a lot of people would, like anybody from a major city, or like anybody from Dublin, you're, you're a culture regardless. Whether you oh, like yeah. it or not, you're driving tractors, you smell like shite, and that's just it. But whereas they don't realise you're a townie. Different kettle of fish. You can't say you're a townie in Dublin either. There's a total different meaning for it. Does it? Yeah, townie means you're rough out. Oh, does it? Yeah. But you're not rough out. Are you rough? No, I'm I not can't tell rough. if you're rough. I'm definitely not rough. Are you not? What? I don't know. Oh, it's harsh. <laughs> Like, you thought we were friends. Oh. You, dude, like, uh, you, you shocked me with the... I'm still, I'm still stuck on the 30 pints thing. I'm, that's where I'm rattled. I can't even properly ask uh, you. It probably, it probably wasn't 30, but it's, well, there was a lot of pints between 1 and 4 a.m. Like. The only... The last time I remember drinking Guinness. And the worst part was I was pulling my own pints as well. So, like, I was just, like, absolutely silent. And every single time... <laughs> every single time... <laughs> Hold on. We get a lot of listeners abroad, right? And we get a lot of listeners, even in the north and stuff like that. You used the reference there to measure how hard you were going at it. I was absolutely sound. 
That's a f- <laughs> <laughs> That's just normal. That's just that fun. means going very hard at the pints. Okay. So yeah, so to explain. <laughs> so you know what a sow is, don't you? A no, cow. a lot of people don't. So it's a feet not a cow. Shear me a cow. You're all right. Oh, it's okay, I haven't had enough coffee today. I'm in a pub and I'm drinking coffee. That's just the start, but I should be having a pint. Yeah, it's true. So a sow. You know what a pig is, don't you? Not to be confused with the police force. The pig. It's a female pig. Now, if you've ever seen a female pig eat, or a pig by itself, yeah. even, it's like... That's what it's like. Sour that's going to be some ASMR creepy bastards going to cut that now. Did you like that? You did? That was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just absolutely milling points. That's all, and the boys can do the same. Mm. That's very exciting, the notion. So I'm gonna, yeah. Are you gonna? Do you do it live or do you do you message live? Or what way do you do? What? Yeah, just my stories would be updated throughout the day. My Instagram would be. I'd be a dose, more so, more of a dose than usual on Christmas Day. That's interesting, though, to keep it. I out. actually have a highlight reel from last year saved on my Instagram page. Do that. Twenty four cans of Christmas. I've actually updated to twenty four cans of Christmas twenty one, and then twenty four cans of Christmas twenty two is saved there as well with a countdown that you can save. To remind you that we are doing 24 cans of Christmas. Just in case you weren't aware that Christmas Day is on Christmas Day. Are you doing 24 cans of Guinness? Or no, what? I'm actually... You're too heavy. Though, I'm trying with the idea of getting a keg. Oh. So, like, I've been told, what, what's in a, a keg? Is it 88 points or something? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's not 24 cans of Christmas. But I, I won't be doing it by myself. Split with, the, with the two boys. With the two lads, yeah. So, you know. And yeah, uh, and you have room for a bit extra as well if you're feeling so way inclined. That's a thing, yeah. I mean, that's a serious. You're you're getting fair serious. You have to do a charity if that's the case. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can manage to get my hands on a keg, I'll do it no matter. Uh, I, mean, I want to sponsor a keg. Kevin has a board leash, by the way. Or... Would you have a tap? I don't have one. I mean, no point giving me a keg if you don't give me the tap. He does actually. He do, I think he does a mobile thing actually here. I think that he he, he leases out to I'll watch. Have the a I'm pretty I'll have sure. A bird in his ear before I leave. I tell you this because you do. I, I won't keep it much longer. Okay. Do you um? Because I, I, I'm always interested. When, so somebody sends you out. Do they message you first? Go hi, Louise. Hi, Classy. Classy. Uh, can we send you out a product? And have, has there any been a point where you're going, Eric? Even I wouldn't be in any interest interest in that. Like they would usually uh, would usually be like, Hey, Louise, love your content. This now would you would you mind sending me on your address? You'd love to send you a product. Blah blah. There's no pressure for you to post or whatever. And to be honest, if I get a really nice note off someone, yeah. like it's always the note I get that would be like, ah, I'm putting this up. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's generally like I don't get sent stuff from like big companies. Yeah. So it's generally like smaller um, Irish owned companies. I think that's that way cooler. That don't have the budget to be paying people to be promoting them. So when they send a lovely note, I'm just like, oh, like with the, with the wax thing, I was like, you might as well be calling me Chewbacca. Like, <laughs> I actually, I picked up the note and I was like, what are they trying to say? And I was like, dearest Chewbacca, I know. Hello, Louise. <laughs> I, do you know what? My, the simpleness of my brain thought, wax. She's going, wax in the car. Is that, oh, you mean hair removal wax? Yeah, yeah. Right, fair enough. Yeah, the, and just like that, the odd time I've ever gotten sent something was from a, a local crowd. But it's normally, you'll normally, you know, like if you've ever, if anybody's ever sold anything themselves, and like whether even from a ticket to anything, the kick you get. Yeah. From somebody buying that one yeah. thing, like rather yeah. than it being a multinational corporation or whatever, when somebody and somebody writes it, you know, it's the person that put mm. that thing together wrote it. But even like I actually there's a there's a company called Crack Galore in um, I think they're where are they based out of? Oh, I saw their stuff originally at a market in Limerick. I think they could be based out of like I'm not going to say where they're based because I'll offend them if they hear this. <laughs> um, but they, I bought a Christmas jumper off them. Like, right. like I didn't know it wasn't sent to me, and it basically was like. Feck it, sure look, it's Christmas. And then in massive capital letters, pints. Class. And I wore it when I was out in Galway and the amount of people that asked me where it's from and even messaged me on Instagram, where is it from? And went and bought them. I was like, yes. Class. Yes. That's the perfect, yeah, that's perfect. They need to stitch in or knit in like a QR code onto their shoulder yeah. or something so people can just go up and, and swipe it. Yeah. But that, I love that. The same with Harry Baby down in Cork. Mm. Uh, young, he, I put up the odd uh, phrase and he stuck up for me a few times because jokes of mine have been... Harry come. Baby, that's where they do the t-shirts. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Am I, the, get, am I actually going on them to make me 24 cans Christmas t-shirts? He'd be all... Dara, uh, we will hook it up. He's a friend of the podcast. He, But he's a, he's a class act. Yeah. He's spotted a few times that larger names, we'll call them, I suppose, 
online personalities have completely lifted jokes of mine and sold them as their own online. Stop. Yeah, it's I've been it happened a couple of times, like, and I didn't spot it, mm. but he did. Yeah. Or people would go, "This sounds familiar." Do you? Do you? And it's happened a few times. Yeah, yeah. And what he'll do then is he will. He did it twice where he. I, I remember I was on a film set one day. He goes, Can, "Are you anywhere near a blank wall with a white t-shirt?" I went, "What kind of a question is that?" But yeah, my pure fluke. I'm wearing a white t-shirt. Get somebody to take a photograph of you right now. What? Well, and he will illustrate the joke through one means or another. Yeah. Put it on the t-shirt through using Photoshop mm. and say, Tom came to me with this three months ago and I'm only getting around to it, which basically backdates my joke. Yeah. So anybody else thinking that, he, and he'll go after it. He will tag the person and everything goes. So thinking one that, level. Yeah, just, you're going, that's You need a, friends like that. Yeah, a class act. Yeah. But in fairness, he's, he's one of those, he, he's hooked up with a bunch of artists and stuff that I know. Um, I know Eva Dooley, I think he's hooked up with her. He does Water for Whisper stuff. But it, mm. again, a cool, it's not a one-man band. He now has a big team work from it. And yeah. they all love working for mm. him. And that's the, that's the sort when people come up and go, where did you, you go, where did you get the I'd be only delighted yeah. to tell you. Because the whole backstory is cool, mm. like, you know. Yeah. What's, what's the, okay, so we have 24 pints, 24 cans of Christmas, possibly mm. pints of a keg can be organised. Mm. But I think as a result of this podcast, we probably will be able to get you a keg. I do like kegs. Literally. On premises here. Yeah, I don't. I don't need anyone to pour my pints. I'm allowed to do that myself. Have you? Can you back the car up to the door of the place? Is what I'm saying. Oh, well, yeah. Well, just yeah, you could, yeah. Yeah, you could. There's a set down area. Yeah, it's yeah. very important stuff. Yeah, the guards will just wave you on. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> got a ticket from Pulp from getting dropped out. I got dropped outside here to say disability car space. Yeah. And I was actually I was going into a different establishment, not Cavanaugh's. Oh, I was going into Lily's. I was getting dropped in to, to go for dinner in Lily's, and which is next door. And wasn't all in the parking space all of literally hovering all, like all of about say five seconds car car right beside out ticket given. I was like, oh Jesus. I was literally jumping out of the car. Felt bad. I didn't have to pay it, but <laughs> So what is other than your stand up debut, uh which would be all wet, waiting with bated breath, when and what else is coming up? Or have you a series of stuff that because you, you you I have a funny feeling you've always got something in the pipeline. I am. I'm starting to make moves and shapes. I guess I like a, a bit of a shaper, but like I suppose starting to focus on the comedy content and getting some content out for that, ready for maybe supporting a show. Um, I'm looking into getting into radio also. So there's class going doing training in radio next week. Um, what else? There's a few. Um. The weekend of the 16th, 17th, I'm going back to Westport with all the content creators that I was there with uh, a couple of weeks ago for more gallivanting. And I've just received a megaphone that I arrived, <laughs> that I ordered in replacement of my Bluetooth microphone just to take it up a notch. So I'll be going around Westport with a megaphone. So you won't miss me. I love it. Because yeah. there's, there's no, there's oh, so often you'll find it goes, so I'll be at O'Shea's at about 2.30. You won't need to know where Louise is. You will hear me. You. you will hear me before you see me. <laughs> now, and that, that's a given without the microphone, to be honest. Well, classic Odie, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank it's you very, very much. It's been emotional. Thanks for having me. Cheers.